I'm beginning to rethink how I analyze lease up absorption in self storage new construction and self storage expansions. Let's talk about that today. My name is Mark Helm and I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self Storage and I'm the creator of the Self Storage Quick Start Academy. And what I do is I support small investors who want to get in the self storage business or who want to grow their self storage business strategically do that in a way that creates true wealth and a fulfilling career. And when I first got in the self storage business in the mid 90s and I was I, I got in as a uh, commercial real estate agent working with the acquisition director of a REIT. And he told me then that when they add new space or build a facility, that on average they lease up about 5% of their square feet per month until they hit stabilization. Boy, that'd be nice today. And for years, the first few years or so, that was how I analyzed the lease up and absorption in the self storage business. But the way my mind works and the, as I was working with other people, I ended up slowly kind of moving that over to square feet per month. You can use units per month, but I find square feet per month was a little better because you know a unit could be 25 square feet or it could be 300 square feet they both show up as a unit but 300 square feet sure has a lot more of my space absorbed so i eventually got to the point where i was using square feet per month as an absorption number the storage world analyzer uses square feet per month as the number and it worked well for many years and then around 2018, I began to notice that the absorption numbers and the projects I'm involved in and the absorption numbers and the projects of the people I've been coaching tended to be all over the board. I remember last year the SSA came out in an article and said that the average absorption time period for new construction went from 30 months to 36 months and that baffled me and I really tried to research it and talk to them and talk to the art, uh, authors of the article and try to see where they were getting that number because it would sure seem to me that the lease up time would depend on the size facility you're building if I'm leasing up at a thousand or 1500 square feet a month it's going to take me a lot longer to lease up a hundred thousand square feet than it would for me to lease up 50,000 square feet and I, I spent months that just baffled me I thought about it for months and months I never did get a full explanation on how that number came into being other than that was the average of the of the facilities that they were tracking and they weren't tracking size they were just a, a, tracking lease up to stabilization so I'm lo I was looking for a formula what was the key that I could use because we had some renting at 600 square feet a month and some renting at 2,000 square feet a month now so I started looking for what's the formula what's the combination of things I can look at to get a more accurate reading on what the lease up is really going to be so the first thing I did is I looked at, and obviously you've got to, and if you're not, do so, but look at the square feet per capita in your submarket. If it's higher, your lease up's gonna be slower. That just makes sense. But I started looking for some trends so I could maybe get some benchmark numbers. If currently it's 10 square feet per capita, how will that translate into projecting what a lease up's going to be compared to maybe eight per capita? Well, again, it really depends on where you are, your sub market, the average income. There were just too many variables. I couldn't make that connection and come up with an accurate absorption projection. In Texas, for example, we've had projects that were in 12 square feet per capita that leased up great 
faster than other projects in other parts of the country at eight square feet per capita. So I couldn't find the correlation there. I started looking at Google spend, how much money people are spending on online marketing. Surely if you're spending more money on online marketing, that would affect your lease up. Well, it probably does. You've got to spend that money today. You've got to show up where people are looking. But I couldn't find the correlation. I couldn't find a formula I could use to relate Google spend to square feet absorbed per month. I spent a lot of my money and a lot of my time learning online, studying what other industries do online, something I highly recommend so you're not just hearing the echo that goes around the self-storage industry, but you actually see what other people do. I've learned a lot in the art of paid traffic. Rick Mulready's podcast used to be called The Art of Paid Traffic. More than I ever thought I would know, but it's important as an owner to begin to know that stuff today. Even if I'm not going to do it, I need to know about it. But I could not connect the dots and get a correlation on absorption through that. Sure, it affects it, but I'm not smart enough to come up with that formula. So for the past year, I've been looking, running numbers, trying to come up with a better formula for projecting Lisa. And then I began to notice something. Now, as soon as I began to notice it, coronavirus hit and has really turned everything upside down. But this is what I began to notice. New construction and larger expansions in fairly healthy submarkets. Now, I don't want to get into the total definition at this moment of a healthy submarket, but I began to notice a trend and it went back to my early days in the self storage business. What I began to notice was that in healthy submarkets today, from about 2018 on, mid 2018, they were leasing up at about 2 to 3% per month. And I was noticing that in the Northwest, the Southeast. And so I went back and began to run the numbers. Now, if the submarket was not overbuilt, I began to notice that trend all over with the people I'm working with and in our facilities. I also began to notice that parking leased up at 8 to 10 percent per month till it got to quote stabilization. Now, we have some facilities that are leasing up at have averaged one and a half percent, but they are clearly in overbuilt markets. We have had some projects that lease up closer to five percent, but they were in very healthy markets. But on average, I began to notice that. Then coronavirus hit. Of course, that threw a wrench into everything. And but that's Corona is a temporary phenomena. Things may not go back exactly how they were, but it's going to re change at some point in time. All I can tell you is that today what I'm doing is I'm if it's a healthy submarket, I'm changing the I'm figuring out the square foot absorption per month based on two, two and a half and a really healthy, high income, low square foot per capita submarket. I may go as high as three, although it's been a while since I did that to be safe. And I calculate that two, two and a half, three percent into a square feet. And then that's the number that we've been using in the absorption analysis. It was working well across the board with the people I'm working with till coronavirus hit. Then it's been all over the board again, but it's starting. I've noticed, especially in this month, July 2020, it's starting to come back. And I don't want to say be normal, but it's looking more like it was six months, you know, four months ago. This is not scientifically derived. Could be wrong, but this is how we're today calculating absorption. I've gone back to the how I did it when I first got in the business. Percentage absorption per month, translating that into square feet. 
it's interesting how life goes in a circle sometimes. Anyway, that's my thoughts on absorption today. My name is Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self Storage, and I'm the creator of the Storage World Analyzer. That's the financial analysis tool we use to run the projections. What does it look like at 2% or 600 square feet a month? What does it look like at 800 a month? What does it look like at 1500 a month? And we run those numbers and then base many of our acquisition decisions and decisions to uh, go on and build, not build, based on what those numbers are. If you're using Excel, great. I invite you to look at the Storage World Analyzer. Go to creatingwealththroughselfstorage.com. There's a lot of information on the analyzer there, as well as storageworldanalyzer.com. So thank you very much. I look forward to being with you next week. Stay healthy, stay safe. See you then.